In a vast sea of really boring three color flags, some of which really should have bears on them. I'm looking at you, Russia. It was the Californians who went grizzly. Why? Where are the Californian grizzlies of today? Were they ever there? Who were the bear flaggers? What was the bear flag revolution? And what does the California Republic have to do with all of this? Let's roll. These are the taxidermied remains of Monarch, who is sometimes referred to as the last wild grizzly bear in California. He is also the bear who is allegedly depicted on the California state flag. He was captured alive in 1889 and was turned into a bit of a celebrity when thousands of people would come to see him in his enclosure. Monarch ended up living in a cage for 22 years of his life in Golden Gate Park. He did not seem that content with his existence there. But at the time, Monarch's life was championed as a major success of wildlife conservation. This wasn't entirely untrue. While Monarch's existence may have been a sad one, at least he wasn't shot and hunted, like the rest of the entire population of California's grizzlies. Prior to Spanish settlement in the second half of the 1700s, it is estimated that as many as 10,000 grizzly bears inhabited modern-day California. It is thought that the bears lived across almost the entirety of the state, except for its most southeastern and northeastern corners. Several place names that include the Spanish word for bear, also, trace their origins back to that first Spanish overland expedition. For example, the town of Los Osos. Spanish settlers began to populate California and establish large cattle herds as the primary industry. Domesticated livestock was easy prey for the grizzly bears roaming freely across the state, and by eating their livelihood and scaring the new settlers, the grizzlies became public enemy number one. So they were hunted and captured, and sometimes even pitted against other animals for sport. Known as bear baiting events, these events flourished throughout 19th century California. Bloody fights that pitted bears against bulls, dogs and other animals. They often inspired betting as to whether the bear or the bull would prevail. In a typical battle, the grizzly bear would be chained to a post, while the bull would be roped to the bear to keep them within each other's orbit. The terms for bear and bull marker may have been coined in view of these spectacles. A bear attacks by swiping his paw downwards while a bull hooks upwards with his horns. Bear baiting was not unique at all to California. In fact, it was an old, old tradition, probably predating the Romans. So yes, the grizzlies were no longer having a good time once humans started arriving in California. And once upon a time, California had been a haven for bears, potentially having the highest concentration of anywhere in the world. It wasn't just the Spanish who changed all of that, however, but rather the discovery of gold, which brought with it an intense rush of people. As less than 75 years after its discovery in 1848, almost every grizzly bear in California had been tracked down and killed. One prospector in Southern California nicknamed Grizzly Bill claimed to have shot over 800 grizzly bears in a 20-year period. The last sighting of a live grizzly in California occurred in 1924 in Sequoia National Park. So while grizzlies have been well and truly eradicated from California, there is no question about their historical and cultural relevance to the state's history. As when the original and first bear flag was designed back in 1846, grizzlies demographically made up a significant chunk of the population of the state. So that is one part of the explanation of why there is a bear on that flag. But just saying that there used to be a lot of bears in California doesn't explain exactly how we got to that flag of today. This leads us to the time when California became an independent country and the first iteration of the Republic of California flag, which inspired today's modern design. Back in the mid-1800s, United States and Mexico had a tense relationship, largely over who would control what land. In 1836, Texas became independent from Mexico, but as of 1844, had not been annexed yet into the United States. And in 1821, the Mexican War of Independence gave Mexico and California independence from Spain. So for the next 25 years, California remained as a remote, sparsely populated district of the newly independent country of Mexico. The child inside of me always gets giddy thinking about the prospect of California remaining a part of Mexico till today. Would we still have Hollywood? And if there still would have been something similar to Hollywood, would Spanish have become the de facto main business and entertainment language of the Western world? Would McDonald's be serving burritos and tacos instead of Big Macs? Whoa! Anyway, in 1844, James K. Polk won the US presidency and started pushing for the annexation of California and Texas. Polk and many of his contemporaries believed in Manifest Destiny, that the United States should continue spreading West 
westwards all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And as the United States aspirations began to conflict with the fact that Mexico already held much of what is now the American West, skirmishes began to break out between the two nations near their respective borders. Moving on to around 1845 and 46, California had been largely neglected by Mexico for the 25 years since Mexican independence. It had evolved into a semi-autonomous region with open discussions amongst native Californians about whether California should remain with Mexico, seek independence, or become annexed to the United Kingdom, France, or the United States. Decrees issued by the central government in Mexico City were often acknowledged and supported, but ignored in practice. Mexican law had long allowed grants of land to naturalize Mexican citizens, and obtaining Mexican citizenship was not that difficult, as many American immigrants had gone through that process in order to obtain land. That same year, in 1845, anticipation of war with the United States and the increasing number of immigrants resulted in direct orders from Mexico City, denying immigrants from the United States entry into California. The orders also required California's officials not to allow land grants, sales, or even rental of land to non-citizen immigrants already in California. Furthermore, all non-citizen immigrants who had arrived without permission were threatened with being forced out from California. Interesting how in the past, Americans were actually trying to become Mexicans, and Mexico wanted them to stay out. Only going by the historical record of how much land the Mexicans have lost, they should have way more fear from Americans crossing over the border than the other way around. So in June of 1846, in the midst of the Mexican-American War, a group of American settlers decided to declare California an independent republic. The details of exactly what happened are quite sketchy at best, but amongst their grievances that spurred on this mini-revolution was that they had not been allowed to buy or rent land and had been threatened with expulsion from California. Furthermore, this rebellion was encouraged by the US Army, as it added to the overall Mexican troubles with regards to the war effort. So this led to the formation of the California Republic, otherwise referred to as the Bear Flag Republic, an unrecognized breakaway state from Mexico that for 25 days in 1846 militarily controlled an area north of San Francisco in and around what is now Sonoma County in California. Apparently little or no blood was spilled during this revolution. The Mexicans were sympathetic to the American cause, letting them take the barracks in Sonoma without any resistance. And shortly after taking Sonoma, the rebellious Americans raised the first California state flag, featuring a bear, a star, a red stripe, and the words California Republic. But this California Republic ceased to exist on July 9th when the US military arrived and assimilated the rebels into its own ranks. California was thereafter conquered by the US military, and after a number of skirmishes and defensive battles, the Treaty of Cahuenga was signed by the Californians on January 13, 1847, securing American control over the state. Easily the most notable legacy of the California Republic was the adoption of its flag as the basis of modern state flag of California, though no explanation was ever given as to why exactly there was a bear and a star on it. As I have previously speculated, it may have had something to do with the high number of bears in the state. Other sources also add that it may have been a way to make a point to the Mexicans that California had the prowess and will to stand up for itself. It wasn't until 1953 that this design and specifications for the state flag were standardized and officially the bear flag became the state flag of California, after a slight improvement to the original bear. So that's it. A mildly interesting and a slightly depressing story, as I can't help but feel sorry for all the bears. It would be great to see them reintroduced, the possibility which is not off the table in the not so distant future, and then Monarch could regain his popularity and become a symbol of the rebirth of an entire species. Now check out this map of California that I made specifically for this video. It is available on my store, geoperspective.org. Buying my maps is the best way to support my channel and to encourage me to make more videos on similar topics. Also, this is my Patreon map. Put yourself on this map by becoming one of my sponsors. It would be immensely appreciated. And I'm most thankful to my first Patreon, Sefitz. Now leave a comment by guessing where this footage was taken. Geoperspective, out.